you mahandi la kusahanda balathai dia. We give you praise. Riku mahila feta ni mahanda yada. We give you praise. We give he is praise. risen. Makusa hinda yada. Rapata yada ba. The grave could not hold him. Masada bahanda yai. Rapetu sudayana. My soul will magnify the Lord. My spirit praise his name. For death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is alone. Even in the grave, Jesus is alone. My soul, my soul was magnified the Lord, and my spirit praised His name. For death could not hold Him captive, even in the grave. Even in the grave. Even in the grave. Jesus. Even in the grave, even in the grave, Jesus. Now, can you see with your understanding? My soul, my soul will magnify the Lord, and my spirit praise His name. For death, for death. Even in the grave, even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. Even in the grave, even in the grave, Jesus, Jesus. One more time, my soul, my soul, my soul will magnify the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. and my spirit pray.
chapter 3, verse 17, which one of our anchor scripture for this conference. The Son of Man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. I have made thee a watchman over the house of Israel. I have made thee. You didn't make yourself. I have made thee a watchman over the house of Israel. Goodness, Lord, thank you for making me a watchman. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the grace of making me a watchman. Can you go ahead and begin to say, Lord, thank you for making me a watchman. A watchman. I am a watchman. Mahandayada. Available, open your mouth and begin to pray. In this assignment, as a watchman, I will not fail, I will not falter. In this assignment, you have given me as a watchman, I will not fail, I will not falter. In this assignment, Nahandaya, grace will be made available. Well, grace will be made available to do that which you want me to do. Grace will be made available to intercede. Grace will be made available for me to see. Grace will be made available for me to hear. Mahandayada. Grace will be made available. An effective. I'll be an effective watchman. I will not fail in my duty books. I will not fail. I will not fail in my duty books. I will not fail in my duty books. Mahandayada. Era kataya namasha kapela katayada. Era mena handayada. Esse kele 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 kele. Era kataya namahandayada. In Jesus name we pray. As I pray that prayer, an illustration just came to mind. Have you ever imagined that a watchman that is supposed to be watching over a people or a community? Or a building is asleep. Now, if a white man is asleep, the people is in danger. The life of the people is in danger. You know, last night after the meeting, we we're just having fun in the church. And I heard somebody say, somebody say, ah, we are watchmen. Somebody say, are you a watchman or a security guard? I say, whichever one, the important thing is that a white man do not sleep. Because the reason why a white man cannot sleep is that in his sleeping, he's is endangering. The life of the people is supposed to be watching over. I want to say, Lord, in my duty post, I will not be found sleeping. I will not be asleep in my duty post. Open your mouth and turn that to prayer. I will not be asleep in my duty post. I will not be asleep. I will not be sleeping when I'm supposed to be watching. I will not be sleeping when I'm supposed to be watching. I will not be sleeping. I will not be sleeping. Rakataya nama, ela basa nama handa ya dela ko pelata, ela kana nama handa ya da, ela pete ne me komba handa ya da, isketu ne sila pata ya da, ela ko palata ya nama, esketu ne minya, esse pakata ya nama handa ya da, ela kata ya da basa da ba da ba da. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, as a watchman. All the tools you need to watch effective need to be in place. And we know one of the tools a watchman needs is his hearing, his seeing eyes, and his ability to hear. We're going to say, Lord, I see when I'm supposed to see. I hear when I'm supposed to hear. Listen to this, listen to this. Imagine a watchman that's supposed to be watching over a city. God is saying a thing is not hearing. God is saying, you know, you're going to move these people from this place now. Now, move them from this place now. That's instruction. He's not hearing. Now, 
If you leave the people in the place where God says you move them from, it's endangering the life of the people. You know, say, Lord, my eyes see, my ear hear. I say, watch man, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. The seen eye and the hearing here. Elakaya na mahada yada osya. Erapata na mahada yada. The seen eye and the hearing here. Ekaya na basai na mahada yada. Elebrete jebe la kamada yada. Iramana hada yada basaka taya gada gada. Ela kopara na mahanda yada, esa palakata na mahanda yada, era kopela kopera na na, esketuna me na hala kopela kayada, era kata ya gala gada gada gada, era pakaya na masada bada bada, era kata ya gada, e pande suta lada, e venda yada, esketuna mahanda yada. In Jesus' name we pray. We pray, Lord, my vision will not be blurry. In Jeremiah chapter 1, the Bible was asking Jeremiah, what do you see? Now, what he saw was not clear enough. So God said, what do you see? Let's clear his vision. His vision is blurry. His vision is not seen effectively. And because if you don't see effectively, you can't move effectively. If you don't see effectively, you can't watch effectively. If you don't see effectively, you can't be effective as a watchman. God has said, Lord, let my vision be clear. My vision will not be, will not be blurry. I say, what man, my vision will be clear. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My vision will be clear. My vision will not be blurry. 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 My in Jesus name we pray Amen. Can you put your hands in your ears and this, this year as sanctify? In the name of Jesus, this year has clarity. He has yes. clarity. Open your yes. mouth and make it open. I say, watch my, my ears. My they hear clearly. My hand de la cosa li fanta yada. Ese fanta haka ya de besula feta yada. I hear clearly. I hear clearly. It ran feta yada. Mi kan de la cosa hi la vanta yada. Ere mele gede 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 gede. Ere panta yada basa hi la vanta yada. Ere kata yada bada bada. Ela mahanda yada. Ese mele gede gede gede. Era katana mahanda yada, ele proto na mahake lava, e fanta yada mahake la penda dia, esketu na mahanda yada, ela baya na mahanda yada. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus. I the Lord says I'm raising intercessors from this meeting. Now there's someone here the Lord said to tell you. He said he has made you an intercessor. You know it. He has given you different signs. He has even told you to raise people to begin to pray. Now, it's not about praying for yourself. He said interceding on behalf of others. Interceding for nations. He said the fire on the altar just got just got to rekindle in this meeting. Just got to rekindle in this meeting. We're going to pray. I say, watch man. In the name of Jesus, I will obey the instruction coming from you. Lord, give me grace to obey instruction. I will not be disobedient to the heavenly instructions. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I will be obedient to instruction. I will be obedient to instruction. Mahanda yada. Erakata yana mahanda yada. Efata yana masahi kabayada. Erekete legede gede gede. Eramasada mana, elabanda yada ba, erekato na mahanda yada, esapa na mahanda yada, erakata yada ba, sada ba da ba da, erepete lega na mahanda yada, erepete lega 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 lega, esai na mahanda yada. In Jesus' name we pray. That pen lost, I tell you, you are asking. 
So I, I'm not praying for myself. He said, intercessors don't pray for themselves. It's not about them. It's about others. And what you don't understand is that the moment you begin to pray for others, God raises other people to pray for you. I have found that in my little life. That whatever, whenever I concentrate on praying for others, naturally without praying for my need, God meets my needs. What I come to understand is not just God meeting them. God is raising others to pray for me while I'm praying for others. So that person say the fire has just been rekindled. So all you need to do is start. As a matter of fact, a woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God begin to pray. I say, what man? In my duty post, I will not be found wanting. I will not be found wanting in my duty post. Can you open your mouth and begin to pray? I will not be found wanting. I will not be found wanting in my duty post. My duty is to watch. I will not be found wanting. My duty is to watch. I will not be found wanting. In my duty post, I will not be found wanting. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rakata Bada 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 Irako Mahanda Yada, Isada Bada Bada, Irakata Yada Bada, Eremene No Mahanda Yada. In Jesus' name we pray. A few years ago, I, I come in contact with the scripture about a watchman. And I've been using that scripture to pray. Isaiah chapter 56, from verse 10. Now listen to this. Is what men are blind. Is it why the sinner is very important as a watchman? Now, how would you watch over a people or a city if you are blind? How would you see when the enemy is penetrating? How? Look at this. He mm. said, Is what men are blind? Mm. They are all ignorant. Now, we're going to pray. I will not be blind as a watchman, I will not be ignorant. Can you open your mouth and turn that to prayer in the name of Jesus? As a watchman, I will not be blind. I will not be ignorant. As a watchman, I will not be blind. I in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They said they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Now one of the attributes of a dog is that they bark. Now if you have a dog and it's not barking, go and check. That's not a dog. The noise maker. Few years ago, I was staying in the place, and there's this dog they bought, very big. The man was just feeding the dog. The dog was just there doing nothing. I said, go and kill this dog. If anybody comes to this guy, can't do anything. Because one of the attributes of a dog is to bark. And as a watchman, enemies should not come to your territory. When you bark, they run. So if the enemy is having a sweat day in your territory, as a watchman, check. You are not doing your work. Look at what they said. Say sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. I will not be fine sleeping when I'm supposed to be working. I say, watchman, open your mouth and begin to pray. I will not be fine sleeping when I'm supposed to be watching. I will not be fine sleeping. Mayana <laughs> 
Ramana handa yada basahi kabadia. Eraka da bahanda yada. Eraka taya nama handa yada. Esa palakata yada. Erapanda hila bande la kosia. Emete de gede gede gede. Makada basa tala gado sole debo. Rakata yada ba. Erama handa yada bada. Levado brabe la zata yada la. Rakata yada basa daba daba da. Rakata na mahanda ya daba E rakata le pande la koselia E sepe le gade gade In Jesus name we pray Amen. One of the attributes of a watchman is that they intercede We're going to say Lord grace for intercession Grace for supplication let it come upon me. I say, what man? Grace to intercede in the name of Jesus. Grace to intercede. I cannot my hand yada. Erapada yada basada bada. Elebrende kele gede gede gede. Arakata yana ma. Erapata yana ma hand yada. Esepele gede gede gede. Erakata yana ma hand yada. Erakata yada basada bada. Ebanda kaya daba. Erakada bada bada. Esama na hand yada. Erakatele gede gede gede. Erami kumbela tanda ba. Eya kada bada bada, esha bada bada, erakata na mahanda yada, erakata yada ba, esha bala kada bada bada, erakata yana ma, rake mahanda yada, esha baka mahanda yada, erakata bada bada, erame na sumba hinda yada. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, we've had people say, when you say, let's come and pray. They says, number one, some people says, I don't have a, um, I don't have the ministry of prayer, something like that. But people say, I don't have the ministry. Now, there are some things that we say, eh, that some of us say in this day and time. They sound very ridiculous to me because we didn't grow up that way. Now, one of the things we saw when we were growing up was we don't wait for evangelism department. It's just a normal thing. Go, you preach the gospel. It was not a specific. It was for everyone. So when it comes to prayer, it's not saying it's delegate. Yes, there are people for purpose of structure in churches that are saying this is where we operate. But as a child of God, prayer should be your thing. We're going to begin to pray this morning. Every prayer altar because one of the way as a what man to do your work effectively is in your prayer altar we're going to say every prayer altar that is cold that is dead this morning the fire of revival fall upon the prayer altar this morning the fire of revival fall upon the prayer altar. open your mouth and begin to pray the fire of revival fall upon every prayer altar that is dry that is dead that is cold Mahanda Yadaba is Samanda Yada. We will not be cold in our prayer time. In our, our prayer time will not be cold. Our prayer time will not be cold. E Kaya Nama Sadabada. E Ramana Handa Yada. E Saika Mina Handa Yada. E Kaya Nama Handa. E Rakata Yadaba. E Repela Kaya Nama Sadabada. E Ramekomba Handa Yada. In Jesus' name, name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Next two, three, four prayer point. I want you to ask someone. Scripture says, "When thou not revive us again, thy thy people may rejoice and be glad in thee." I'm gonna begin to pray for that person you are holding. Let the fire of revival fall upon my brother. Let the fire of revival fall upon my sister. Can you open your mouth and turn that to prayer? The fire of revival upon my brother, upon my sister. In their study life, in their prayer life. Let the fire of revival fall upon them. The fire of revival fall upon them. My brother, the fire of revival fall upon my brother. My sister, the fire of revival fall upon him. In my heart, I am in Sabakaya Dabada, in Rapatayada, in La Pata Hatayada, in Sadabada Badabada, in Rekatele Gede Gede Gede, 
In Jesus' name, we pray. Go to pray for that person. I hold one more time. I say, what man, the grace to continue in your work. The grace not to faint on the way. The Bible says, if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is little. We're going to pray for that person you are holding. You will not fall by the wayside. You will not faint. You will not fail. In your assignment as a watchman, you will not fail. Open your mouth and begin to pray for that, for that person you are holding. In your assignment as a watchman, you will not fail. You will not falter. In your assignment as a watchman, as a watchwoman, you will not fail. You will not falter, Mahanda Yada. Era kata yada basai la valeria. In the name of Jesus. Ipanda handa yada. Era kata yana mahanda yada. Esa palaka yana mikale de dunia. Efete lege 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 lege. Era kata yana ma. Esa kele lege 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 lege. Like fire, like rain. Let your glory. Like fire, like rain, let it fall. Like fire, like rain, like fire, like rain, let your glory fall. Like fire, like fire, like rain, let it fall. Like fire, like rain, like fire, like rain, let your glory fall. The locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which are sent among you. That's the word for someone. That's the word for someone. Verse 28 is where my emphasis is. Verse 28 is where my emphasis is. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. After word. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Not some, but all flesh. Now, there will not be distribution of it. And your sons and your daughter shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. I'm going to pray this morning. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit like never before in this morning. 
Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let there be an outpouring of your power. Of your spirit like never before. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit like never before. Oh Lord. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit like never before. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Find a Romans chapter 8 verse 11. It says if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. If that same spirit dwells in you is it that same spirit that raised jesus from the dead we quicken your mortal body another version say it will bring back to life that which is dead another version say it will immortalize you we're going to say lord the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead dwells in me let that be a quickening i say what man let that be a quickening in this season i receive a quickening open your mouth and begin to pray I receive a quickening. I receive a quickening. Can you open your mouth? I'm going to pray. I receive a quickening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. LICC, make a joyful noise to the Lord. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Kings, the Father of the Rainbow, the Fruit of the Tongue, the Tongue, the Tongue, the
so. Say, I want to give the Lord some praise. Yes. Are you ready now? Yes. Hey, there is no like our God. We are searched and searched, but we cannot find anyone like him. True or true? True. Come on. You are not dancing. Eh? Come on now. Say, Kosova Mira, Kosigava Mira, Kosova Ruby, somebody. Kosova Mira, Diane Toro, Kosova Ruby, Red. 
I'm going to read from Isaiah 38, verses 18 and 19, and it says, For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee. Do we have the living in the house this morning? Says the living, the living, he shall praise thee. I want you to lift up your voice and praise the Lord. Give a shout of praise unto the Lord this morning. Give a shout of praise unto the Lord this morning. Can we begin to thank God? 
thank him for seeing us through the first of March to this time. Thank you. To the last day. And the last day being Easter. The last day being the celebration of life. For our Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Christ is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Death could not hold him captive. The grave could not hold him down. And so you and I are alive this morning. Can we be on our feet as we begin to file out to give thanks unto the Lord? I want you to be intentional with this Thanksgiving this morning. Be very intentional. It's not just about your money, your offering. But it's about everything about you. Your dance, your whole being. For in him we live, we move. And in him we have our being. So the choir will lead us in danceable songs. I know you have danced. But this one, you are doing it in a different way. That God thank you for making me see this day. Thank you for sparing my life to see this day. We want to appreciate God also for the new month that will enter tomorrow. We will appreciate him with our dance. Lift up your voice and one more time say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, I thank you. Boy.
let you shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! Let somebody that Christ Jesus died for and resurrected for, let him shout hallelujah! Let somebody whom death no longer has power over, let him shout hallelujah! Glory to Jesus! Hallelujah! Second Timothy 1 it says, Therefore, never be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. The first part of Second Timothy 1, verse 8. So at this point, if you have any testimony, whether in the course of the conference or any testimony you want to share, it is time for you to come and testify to the glory of God. Testimony time. Are there overcomers in the house this morning? If you have testimony, please kindly make your way forward. And you've been given the microphone to share your testimony. Hallelujah. Please let's celebrate my sister as she comes forward. Please put your hands together for her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for my life. For adding another year into my life early this March. And I want to thank God for saving me from the hand of one chance. So my work is, I work at times Sunday night, night, morning. So that day I finished from work on Sunday. I was, I wanted to go home. I crossed to the normal way I take my bus. I entered Iyanowuru, Iyanowuru, normal way of taking my cab. Then in that cab, there's an elderly woman. The driver and one old man, I entered. I said, oh, guy, you know where he said, yes, I sat down. Me, normally, I don't talk inside bus. Nothing you will make me, I will talk. So I was just calm. The man was not saying, oh, guy, I want to calm down. I want to calm down. Me, I did not even say anything. Oh, guy, I want to calm down. Drop me. You've passed my journey. You've passed my destination. So the man already got into Bonnie Camp. I don't know people that know VI very well. The man got to Bonnie Camp. Busted speed him. And I said, oh, God, drop this man now from Federal Palace. You're taking him to Bonnie Camp. Papa, drop this man. He said, Auntie, if I tell you what this man do, you know, go believe. I said, what do you do? Where reach this kind of problem? And I said, this man carry dollar for bag. I was like, dollar. I said, hey, well, this one will consign me again. Men are drop me, let me calm down. The man said, no, you're going to the police station. Me, I'm not scared of police. I have my ID card and everything. I said, if you want to go police, men are drop me, me can I? Calm down, I beg. I was not begging, drop this man. He said, no, that the man has dollars of money, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, what happened? The man said, I don't, to speak. I don't know how to speak English. You know, sent me now, I said, I didn't translate. Her. And I translate for the, the man is a Yoruba man. I was not translating from Yoruba to English. Now, so I take enter trouble. So the man speed off. And I said, oh God, please stop this car, let me calm down. While I was arguing with them, the other man I was fighting for touched me. I lost myself. I lost myself for like five minutes. I could not see. I was just looking at them like fool. Then all of a sudden, I Jacob was like, Baba, drop me. Let me come down. Drop me. Drop me. I will scream. Drop me. That was how the man dropped me on the I mean, on the bridge where I didn't even know. I came down with my phone in my hand. That day, my boss sent me money because he wanted to do something in the office. Money was in my account. I came down for like 10 good minutes. I was in one spot. Oh, yeah, like cold. Cold gripped me. I was like, what just happened? Someone was like, Auntie, are you okay? I said, I don't know what happened. I said, I cried all of a sudden. I was like, Father, so this uncle have died. Miracle. <laughs> Miracle will not see me again. Like, <laughs> so this uncle have died. I was like, what will happen to me if I die? Like, where am I going to? I've never even done anything. But I want to give God all the glory that Hallelujah. I'm here to Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, church. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank God for my life. In the month of March, 9th of March, I became a graduate MM. I graduated from Yaba Tech. And today, I'm thanking God because... I'm a year older today. Aww. It's not easy. <laughs> I want to thank God because since I've been, I was born, 
I've not been rushed to the hospital. Like, to the point that I've not been to the hospital to visit anybody Hallelujah. up until now. I'm just grateful for sound health. All I can say, my friend was complaining that I was disturbing them in the morning, but they don't know. Because I alone, I can't even express or say it. What God has done? Is it provision? Is it protection? My job, the, five, the first business I closed in my job was a total stranger. My daddy said something to me that this is your job, I don't like it. Because he said, when you, people that do your kind of job are people that do a lot of things just to close business. But I made something clear to him. If it's for me to put myself down for a business, I'd rather lose that business. But I want to bless God that how he has been doing it, how client has been rolling over without stress. Don't just call me, Mimi, my, my, my maturity date is this day. Roll it over, and that's it. No complaint, no talk. I'm just grateful to God. I want to thank you for everything he has done. And the life of my sisters, my siblings, my friends. L-I-C-C, I say, oh, I want to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I actually don't know where to start from, but I will try to start where I can remember. I've come to give God the glory for what he has done in my life. I have never felt this indebted to God. Like he has done something that I feel so burdened that I'm like, what can I do to thank God? I, last month, I was supposed to undergo a procedure for something. There's been this um, pain that I've had for about four or three years, more than three years. And... Um, each time I keep going to um, for the clinic appointment and they just say, okay, use um, this painkiller and all that. But sometimes the pain will just come in a way that I cannot even explain. And last month, I, I went, I think I went in February and then they said, okay, I was supposed to do this procedure. And I told, I, I, they gave me the um, referral letter and all. But I, I just know God, that the way the doctor sounded, it didn't sound like it was the final bus stop. He just said, okay, do this and then you will continue with this medication. So I was like, I just, my family, my husband was asking me, are you not doing it again? I said, let me just watch my body because I, I felt okay. I, I wasn't feeling too well last month and I said, okay, I can't just rush into doing the procedure. I have to feel very okay. So I just said, okay, I was going to do it maybe this uh, month of March instead of last month. But I want to give God the glory because there's a particular time the pain comes and Last, the, when I was supposed to experience, I'd already prepared my mind that, okay, I'll just take the painkillers some days before and just see what happens. But I thank God because I didn't need to take any medication. I want Hallelujah. to give God the glory because it's been, I just want to give God thanks because I don't even know how to explain years of pain. The kind of pain that you cannot even do anything, it will leave me very, um, I, I have to depend on people to so sometimes even maybe move around or, or just even stand upright. I want to thank God for being fa thank faithful. You, I want to thank God because I did not have to even do the procedure because when I told the doctor that this is what I'm experiencing and he said, ah, what did you, have you done the procedure? I said, no, I've not done it. He said, did you take the medications you were taking? I said, I even stopped everything totally. And I want to give God all the glory. Hallelujah. I just want to thank God. Because when it happened, I was still checking in my body. It was so unusual for me. It was so unusual because I got used to the pain that even when I was not feeling it, something in my head was like, ah, this... Your body is doing you somehow, and then you probably have to take something. I said, I, I just kept telling myself, no, God has done it. God Hallelujah. has done it. Days after, I was still checking in my body, and I'm like, any little thing that wants to feel like, okay, I want to have this pain or something, my head would just tell me, ah, uh, maybe it's that pain that wants to come. But I kept telling that mind, that spirit, that no, God has done it. And whatever God does is permanent. permanent. I want to thank God because God actually just helped me. And I Hallelujah. had to just call my family member that, so please help me thank God on my behalf because I don't even know how to thank God. I've never felt indebted to God. Like, he did something I've been praying for years and then it happened. I cannot even explain how to thank God, but I just want to Hallelujah. Help Hallelujah. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you for these testimonies. We thank you for the healing. 
We thank you for provision. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for protection. Father, we pray that these testimonies are permanent in the name of Jesus. We pray for everyone who is also trusting you for one thing or the other. Father, Lord, you grant unto them in the name of Jesus. Return all glory to your name in Jesus' name. Amen. We have grateful people in the house. Let's jam those hands together for Jesus. It's been an amazing weekend, Abby. God has been amongst us. Amen. I want to appreciate God Almighty for gracing us with his presence this weekend, for his blessings, for the amazing weather throughout this conference. To him alone be all the praise. This weekend, I want to add, this weekend I served as the camp president for the Lagos 2024 Easter Conference. And I also, I also served as the global programs director for the 2024 Easter Conference. My heartfelt gratitude goes to God Almighty for the grace, for his grace. I, will, I extend a sincere thank you to the senior pastors of the Living Impact Christian Center. People, please celebrate daddy and mommy. Pastors Wale and Tina Olaso, thank you so much, sir, Ama, for giving me a platform to serve. God bless you. It, 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 it is indeed an honor to be called to service. I genuinely appreciate this privilege and acknowledge it with profound gratitude. I'm equally thank you to, thankful to the Vice President too, Pastors Vincent and Bosse in Wezerua. Please let's celebrate them. They're all the way in Dundee, the United Kingdom. And also to the Continental Pastors for Africa, Pastors Lekon and Busola Atsilola. They're in Abuja. Let's celebrate them. Thank you so much, Pastors, for entrusting me with this opportunity to serve. I don't take this for granted. I also want to thank God for all our pastors worldwide, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in North America, who collaborated with me to achieve this significant milestone. I mean, what is a global programs director if the global leaders don't collaborate with you? Your support and sacrifices are deeply appreciated. All the times I get to call you, all the times I get to chat with you, thank you for responding. Thank you for, for, for everything that you did. You hold a special place in my heart. I love you so much. I also extend my gratitude to the teams of pastors and leaders in the Abuja Church, in the Portaco Church, in the Ibadan Church, in the Benin Republic Church, and in the Dondo Church in the United Kingdom. God bless you. Your support has not gone unnoticed, and I am truly thankful. We are trusting God that in years to come, more and more locations will spring forth all over the world in the name of Jesus. Also, a big thank you to my Lagos team. God bless you. Celebrate yourself. Thank you so much, my Lagos team, for everything that you did. Thank you for making the program in Lagos so vibrant. God bless you. Your dedication made me look good. It made my role more manageable and enhanced the overall success of the event. I'm also grateful to the gift of my dear husband, Pastor Michael Amuta. <laughs> Who is away in Benin Republic as a call to service? Your unwavering support and love has been my constant source of strength and encouragement. I know you are watching this now, Mike. In everything, thank you for supporting me in everything I do in God's house. God bless you. Despite your commitment in Benin Republic this weekend, your support for me never wavered. You only encourage, you not only encourage me every time, but you provide me with the love and support that I need to fulfill them. Your selflessness and understanding mean more to me than words can say. I love you so much, Pastor Mike. And to everyone who contributed. Despite the financial crisis, God bless you. Please celebrate yourself. Thank you so much for the money that you sent. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that your source will not dry up in Jesus' name. Your financial support significantly contributed to the success of this program. I also want to say a big thank you to those that prayed. God bless you for praying. Thank you for standing in the gap. A lot of people came for videos before the conference. God bless you. Those prayers, God answered. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank 
God, for people that served in different capacities during the conference. Thank you so much. And those that came, some people came from out of town. You left your house and you were here this weekend. God bless you. I pray that whatever prayers that you have prayed this weekend, the Lord will answer speedily in the name of Jesus. Also join me to celebrate our online members. We, we love you. We love you. We love you. Every one of you that joined us online, God bless you. For those that traveled, I pray that the Lord will take you back home safely in the name of Jesus. Men and brethren, the Lord has called us to be watchmen. As you have been upgraded, go in this light. I pray that the resurrection power of God will continually quicken you in your place of assignment. God bless you. Shout hallelujah. Have your seat, please. Shout hallelujah. All those of you that were peppered by our thanking our husband, help me look at them and tell them to go and marry. Don't, don't mind blessing, no. Even those of us that are married should be preparing us. Glory be to Jesus. Sincerely, this weekend has been so glorious. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Somebody in Canada chatted with me yesterday. And said while the prayers were going on here, God was visiting him over there. He said, the moment we mentioned ancient mantles, that the Holy Spirit descended on him where he was in Canada, that literally his fingers, his fingers were visited. They were tingling, they were, they were vibrating. And that he knew that God did something. For him even far away in Canada. What can God not do? Whatever he has done for you. Just receive it. And it shall be permanent in Jesus name. If you take your program booklet. And you look at the inside of the back cover. You will see LICC everywhere. Can you see LICC everywhere? Let's shout it together. Everywhere. It's not loud enough. Let's do it again. Amen. So we are in Nigeria. And you can see from the green, white, green flag. There are five locations in Nigeria. We are in Lagos. We have Ibadan. We have Abuja. We have two in Port Harcourt. Amen. Uh, September, October last year, our branch started in Dundee in the UK. Amen. And you can see that branch over there. Uh, they, Pastor Vincent told me they are joining us this morning. They couldn't do a full-blown Easter conference like we did here. But we are trusting God that by December, they will have a full-blown December convention too. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Um, last month, our church started the Bene Republic. Give Jesus a big, big hand. Uh, they had been holding fellowships before now, but officially last month, they started meeting regularly on Sunday mornings. Let's celebrate God in the life of Pastor Sam Lawson and to strengthen the work there we had to send Pastor Mike Kamuta to go and be with them for this Easter conference. I'm sure they are watching us now. They joined us yesterday. Uh, they also yesterday morning and yesterday evening. Uh, media, if you have them online, can you show them do you have them online? Uh, 
Ah, okay. Hallelujah. So, you see them on the top left there. Kotonou people, we love you. Hallelujah. That's the Kotonou church on the top, on the bottom. Uh, okay, the top right is Abuja church. Let's greet Abuja people. Abuja people, we love you. Hallelujah. Where is that bottom? That's Potakot. Ah, I almost could not recognize that. At the bottom there is our Potakot church. Let's clap for Jesus on their behalf. That's Pastor Lincoln there. We love you. We love you. God bless you all. Amen. And um, okay, that's Pastor Friday Amuta there waving at us in Portacot. Glory, hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus one more time. At the top left of LICC, everywhere you see LICC, Halifax, Canada, can you see that? That church hasn't officially started. But to the glory of God, I'm happy to tell you that by June 16, 2024, that church will be officially started. At the moment, they are meeting to pray. And pastors, Okechuku, Pastor Okechuku and Tolani Obaya, they are pastors there, they are praying. And there are already a few people from, the, from what Pastor Okechuku shared with us. He told us that there are a few Caucasians that are joining them. Caucasians are white-skinned people. Uh, they're joining them already. And I said to them that our church in Dundee, they have a lot of black people. It appears that our Canada church will be our white church. <laughs> Praise God. Let's clap for Jesus. And you see we have Ghana there. Ghana Church hasn't officially started off. Uh, they're having some random fellowships at the moment, but we do not have a date for starting yet, but we are trusting God that very soon I'll be able to come here to announce to you that uh, Ghana Church will be starting. Okay, so that's uh, Canada. They are having um, a program today, 8 to 9 p.m. their own time. Uh, Pastor Kechuku is on the right hand side and we have one of our sisters, Sister Feyi, um, who left here and is over there too now on the left hand side and they are both facilitating the program today, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, as you know that in Canada we also have people in some few places, we have in British Columbia, Pastor Genovo. Uh, Okru, and then we have our brother who left in December, uh, Brother Tsunji, you know, also in BC. We're trusting God that the word of God and the knowledge of God will continue to spread abroad in the name of Jesus Christ. And his name shall be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so if you or anybody is in any of these locations, please ensure that you join us. And if any of you is moving somewhere and you believe that you can coordinate God's work in that place, you can coordinate a fellowship, a meeting, a prayer meeting, or a church, let's talk, let's see us, and God will continue to be glorified. I said God will continue to be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we begin to round off the activities of this Easter conference, Open our program to page 12, and we're going to take a hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, 
until with thee I will one will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Oh, how the world to evil allows me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus it will enable over the world the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Our people cannot play it. You thought I would not sing it or what?
what I'll do, I'll sing because the way Pastor Chidoke played it, if you didn't know the song, you may not know it. But he played it well, just that because of all the harmonies, you may not get it. Do you understand? So, which key is that? F. F is permitted on the piano. Don't get F in your result. <laughs> okay. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my bodies alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. So let's do the chorus together, everybody again. I must tell Jesus. Hold on, hold on. Let me teach these people first and then we now go. Do, 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 so. Do, 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 la. Fa, so, la, so. So far, me rain. Do re mi so so. Do re mi re do. Do 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 so mi. Do mi re do. Let's read now chorus. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my bodies alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my bodies alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me. Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my bodies alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. that we have known it, we can sing it properly, right? Just play the chorus then we go to sleep. I must tell Jesus all of my trials I cannot bear this but it's alone Stress me, kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot be. I must 
neighbor and say that I will stand in the gap. Uh -uh. We're not saying it like watchmen. Say I will stand in the gap. I will stand in the gap. I will stand in the gap for my generation. 
stand in the gap for Say it like you mean it. I will stand in the gap for my generation. I will stand in the gap for We my believe generation. that this will be our heart cry even as we go on from this conference. Hallelujah. Amen. You just sing the song along with us. It was John Knox that said, Give me Scotland or I die. That is that that came from a place of hunger, of intentionality to take his position as a watchman. To say, I will 
and honor and adoration. Thank you for how far you have brought us in this conference. Jesus, we thank you for dying for our sins and rising again for our justification. As we bring this conference to a, to a close, we pray that you will speak to our hearts, your mind. You will open our eyes of understanding and cause us to see what you would want us to see. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seat. It's been a great time in the presence of the Lord as God reveals his mind to us concerning what he's doing at this time. One of the very first things that God brought our way was how he wants us to start looking beyond ourselves. For most of us, in the past, it was how we will be closer to God. It was how our spirituality will be deepened. And we are still going to continue doing that. But now the Lord is saying, I want to share with you what I'm doing with others. I want you to be concerned about your family. I want you to be concerned about your neighbors. I want you to be concerned about your colleagues at work. I want to share with you what is happening in the land. I want you to be concerned about your Jerusalem. For many of us, that will be Nigeria. For some other people, it will be other countries around the world. And we have zoomed in a bit on the intercessory ministry of the watchman. How that you are not a watchman if you are not an intercessor. A watchman is one who hears from God. A watchman is one who sees what God is showing. A watchman is one who bows his knees or stands upon his tower to pray and take things to God on behalf of people. You can never be a watchman if you are not an intercessor. And now that we have done that, it's important that as we round this off, we look at this important part of the ministry of a watchman. We are looking this morning at the topic, Blow the Trumpet. Blow the trumpet. Ezekiel chapter 33, we're going to read from verses 1 through to verse 7. Ezekiel 33, again the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchman. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword coming, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. We have tried to explain the scripture before now. Yesterday we took time to look at this. But I want you to take note of a few more things here. God says, yes the watchman Ezekiel you, you are to hear the word from my mouth and warn them from me. I'm praying for someone that as you live here today, your ability to hear from the mouth of God will greatly increase. You see, we live in days where there are so many preachers all over the whole place, particularly on the internet. And because of the ease of access, many of us follow these people. The truth is this, and I'm sure you know that by now, that when you eat all over the whole place, it leads to confusion. Is that true or false? 
and you will see that the ministry of some preachers in our days is not to lead the lost to the Savior, is to antagonize other preachers. Some people have taken it as their personal ministry to antagonize and to criticize. What's important is that we hear the word from the mouth of the Lord and bring the word to the people. Hallelujah. When you hear from the mouth of God, you will not be confused. When you hear from the mouth of the Lord, it leads to a closer relationship with God. When you hear, that is for me one key sign that the Lord has spoken to you. If he speaks to you, it will lead you to a deeper level of relationship with God. If God speaks to you that word, Bible says, ye are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. That word is a cleansing agent. It doesn't defile, it makes more holy. So if after listening, you are not living more holy than you used to. If after listening, you are not overcoming sin more than you used to, go and check the source of the word. A true word from God will draw you closer to God. A true word from God will not give you liberty to commit sin. You know, sometimes some people say, this word will make you mature. And by maturity, they mean that now you can commit sin without having a guilty conscience. That is not maturity. Yoruba people will say, You see, it's not maturity to be able to commit sin and not have the Holy Spirit prick your conscience. It means that that word is deadening your conscience. It's deadening your spirit. You are dying spiritually. Amen. So God said to Ezekiel, you will hear the word from my mouth and you will warn them for me. In fact, as important as the intercessory ministry of Ezekiel was for the people, more important was his ability to hear from God and let the people know that he has heard from God. Why am I preaching this in this conference? Because I have heard what God is saying and he's saying I should tell his people that at this time, he wants us to be more concerned about living closely to him. He wants us to be more concerned about overcoming sin and getting ready for the coming of the Lord. And as you are getting concerned and you are getting ready, all those of you watching online, you are living righteously and godly in this present world, you are also sharing the same with others. See, the church is not a center for motivational speaking. Praise God because once in a while we can share about things that give hope to your life and help you live better. But principally, the church is a place where we hear about God and the things of God. And anything that can help you live better and closer to God. Hallelujah. So, God said, when he sees the sword coming, he will blow the trumpet. That is the idea behind what we are sharing this morning. That as you leave this place, you will blow the trumpet. I said you will blow the trumpet. Now, some of us, we have siblings that are not living right with God. After this conference, you're going to give them a call and say to them, Look, my brother, I know what you're doing. I know it is not right. And God has laid it on my heart to share with you. Some of the Yahoo Yahoo people are our siblings, are they not? Some of the people that are stealing from, the, from, from their offices, some of them are our siblings. They need somebody to tell them and you are the person that will tell them. Because if you see the sword coming and you blow not the trumpet, the person will die in his iniquity. But God says that the watchman will not be spared. So we are going to blow the trumpet. Come on, said we are going to blow the trumpet. Say it one more time, we are going to blow the trumpet. You know, in those days, when they, their, their cities were there, and whenever people wanted to be warned, the watchman will blow the trumpet. When they hear the sound of the trumpet, everybody knows the meaning. They say, way it will blow it, they will know that there was an imminent attack. They will know that threat was coming. All the war men in the land will quickly go to 
their places and get out their weapons because the watchman has alerted them to the incoming of an attack. Jesus is coming soon and we need to warn the people. You need to learn how to blow that trumpet to your family. You need to learn how to blow that trumpet in your workplace. You need to learn how to blow that trumpet to your spouses if you are married and you have unbelieving spouses. Going forward, we must not keep quiet about the eternal welfare of those that are close to us. Now, sometimes you see your friend committing sin, you just laugh with him. Going forward, we will not laugh again. Because if he sees the sword coming and he does not warn, he also is an accomplice to that crime. When the Bible talks about blowing the trumpet, we see an example in Joel chapter 2. Let me bring up Joel chapter 2 and in verse 15. What does the Bible say here? It said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. We see here how that the blowing of the trumpet was a call for a fast. Sometimes that is exactly what we need to do. Some of our families are under satanic attacks. Just prayer of declaration. I always say that as powerful as declarations are, there are some situations that require more than declaration. You may need to blow a trumpet and call for a fast. And say to your siblings, say to your parents, let's take time to pray. If nobody is listening, go back home yourself. Declare three days fasting. Just stay with them. Take time off work. Go and stay with them in the house. And pray and pray until something happens. I remember very well some years ago. Some things were happening around and in my life. And you know, I was the firstborn in the family. I'm the firstborn in the family. So I traveled back home. And the Lord said that I should pray in the night. So in the night, I stood up in the room where I was. That's my parents' house now. I stood up in the room where I was. And I began to pray. And I began to pray. I began to pray. After some time of praying, I heard the voice of the Lord. And the Lord said that I should ask my mom a question in the morning. That was all that the Lord said to me. So, I finished praying and I thanked the Lord. In the morning, when we woke up, I went to meet her. I said, Mom, what happened? And I told her exactly what the Lord asked me to ask her. Oh, then she began the whole story. Sometimes, if you don't know the root of a story, you may not be able to turn it around. So, she told me what I needed to hear. I said, oh, I see I've not heard this before. Thank you for telling me. I took it back to God in prayer. And that was the beginning of the deliverance in that specific area. Sometimes, you may need to blow the trumpet to declare a fast. Hallelujah. Some of us don't like fasting. Some of us don't like waiting upon the Lord. Begin to learn how to do so. Do it in your family. Sometimes it's happening in a department in the church. You look at your department, they are always rancor and fighting. It was not always like that. Sometimes it's in the church. I remember sharing with my wife, was it yesterday or two days ago? And I asked her if she remembered a point in time when that it was as if there was a, a satanic attack, you know, in the church we were at then. It was as if there was an unleashing of hell upon the church. And you will hear that a brother like this who had never committed immorality in his life began to commit immorality. A brother like this who was fervent, righteous, and, you know, faithful to his family, was, he would just do this. Ah. Then it reminded me also of a bishop I went to preach for in Port Harcourt. This bishop said to me, Pastor, I, that a friend told me that there was a guest in town from South Africa. And they, that man was a bishop from South Africa. So, he, he encouraged me to invite him. He said, so I invited him to our church. Not LICC, but the bishop was telling me about their own church. So he said, when this man came from South Africa, he got to their church, he said he began to feel strangely. And... 
He said something told him he had made a mistake. But he didn't know the extent of the mistake he had made. He said, so this bishop began to preach. And when he finished preaching, he began to lay hands on people. He began to lay hands on people and raised money. So he said, ah, God, help me, deliver me. Watchmen, we have to be careful. Say, as this bishop left the church, immorality began. He said to me, man of God, my key pastors, my key leaders, who are faithful people to their wives, they began to sleep with girls all around. So he began to say, Lord, what, what has gone wrong? What have I done? And then he knew that it was that bishop. <laughs> Be careful who lays hands on you. Particularly when you read, see rings, big rings with insignias that you don't understand. I can never allow a man who is wearing a ring with the insignia of a scorpion, lay hands on my head. Okay, after you are done with scorpion, won't you be having migraine? This man didn't know what to do because the enemy has attacked. The sword has been unleashed. What do you do in that circumstance? You blow the trumpet. You sanctify a fast. And when you sanctify a fast, you begin to cleanse the land. You cleanse the family. You cleanse the people. You cleanse all those bad laying of hands and all those satanic deposits. You cleanse them out of the place so that God's people can walk with him again. As I'm talking to you already, I know some of you, this is what you urgently need in your life. You need to sanctify a fast. That is what, number one, the blowing of the trumpet signifies. It's a blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. So that Satan con does not continue to run unhindered. So that Satan does not continue to, to take people anyhow. Can you remember that in the early church, Herod took Peter. You remember that? He first took uh, one of them and then, it, 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 was it James or so? I believe that's in Acts chapter 12, right? Let me quickly see that. Yes, Acts chapter 12, verse 1 says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. Verse 4, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Let's read verse 5 together, everybody. One to go. Let's do it again. Louder, stronger, one to go. Did you see that? What, I mean, the church was just living normally. Herod took James. And before they could say Jack Robinson, he killed him. My God, people are wicked. He said, because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he took another one. He began to take from the church as if, as if human beings were fouls. But by the, time he took, by the time he took Peter, the church arose. Church, we need to arise. And sometimes we need to declare a fast. Sometimes we need to pray the church prayed for Peter that no, Herod, you killed James already, you will not kill Peter. And the church prayed until God intervened. How did God intervene in verse 7? Verse 7, it says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison. And the smoke Peter on the side and raised him up, said, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell up from his hand. There are people's chains that need to fall off, but the church needs to pray. There are chains in your family that need to fall off, but your family needs to pray. There are chains in your own personal life that need to fall off, but you need to pray. Blow the trumpet. Sanctify it fast. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. It is part of the work of the watchman. 
Last night we did something. We asked people that had a revelation or something to come out and share it. One of the reasons we had that was because I wanted people to have the boldness and the confidence and the courage that when they see things as watchmen, they can talk. You see, when God reveals something to you that is not just for yourself, don't just keep it to yourself and say, I was praying. For example, if you saw a revelation and you saw an attack upon this church, don't just say, I was praying. What you need to do as a watchman is to quickly reach out to the pastorate so that as watchmen, we can declare a fast. We can call upon the name of the Lord. Because generally, when Satan attacks the church, he will look for the leaders. The Bible says, smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. So, don't keep quiet when God shows you something. Blow the trumpet. Declare far so that all of us can get ready. Shout hallelujah. Number two, when it says uh, blow the trumpet, it means give a warning. It means give what? I didn't hear you. We saw it already in Ezekiel chapter 33. Where the Lord said, warn them, warn them, warn them. Warn them. Um, God reveals things to watchmen so that they can warn people. Uh, there have been occasions where we saw things and we called and uh, we said to people, the Lord says that if you continue doing what you are doing, you, will, you probably won't live long. There have been occasions like that. Warn them. Don't keep quiet. Sometimes, you know, our lives would have been preserved if we warned them. Brother, are you, trying to, are you planning to travel? Then he says to you, yes, I'm planning to travel. Ah, I, what I saw. Please, can you postpone your journey? Don't travel yet. Because if you travel now, the journey is not too smooth. It's not too good. That is the kind of warning the Lord wants us to start giving. Don't just say... And I saw it too. Oh. How many of you have been there that something bad happened to somebody? Then you said, ha, I saw it. Raise your hand. You are not raising your hand now. You saw it. Did, what did you do about it? Nothing. Don't let that happen again. That is this warning we are talking about. You call the person. Brother, what's going on? You are... Are you still waiting upon the Lord? Are you fasting? Because what I saw was that Satan attacked you. I saw that something happened. When watchmen arise, God will be revealing more secrets to the church before things happen. I pray that whatever revelation gives, whatever vision, vision give that you have lost, may they come back in the name of Jesus Christ. As part of this, will be soul winning and evangelistic effort. It is part of the warning. When you go to a sinner and you tell them that Jesus loves them and they need to repent of their sins, that is you warning them. Some of you may say, Sir, I'm not able to preach to him. It's my boss at work. What about you getting a tract? A tract that can... And you pray three days on that tract. Lord, as this tract touches his hand, convict him of his sin. Then you go and give him. And if you cannot give him in his presence, look for a time he's not in the office and drop it on his table after you have prayed on it. We can do a lot more in our generation if as watchmen we are not afraid. We are not afraid of their eyes. We are not afraid of what they will do. And we begin to blow the trumpet. Hallelujah. This trumpet we are talking about requires that we blow it with clarity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and in verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and in verse 8. The Bible says, For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? So your trumpet sound must be clear for everyone to know what it is about. When you are talking to your children, our children need the Lord. And 
please our children teacher, blow the trumpet to them. Don't say they are still children. Some of our children are not born again. Some of our children don't know the Lord yet. So when you teach them in their school, blow the trumpet very clearly. Our pastors, when you make an altar call, don't make it with an uncertain sound. What does that mean? For example, instead of you to announce and say, if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you feel that that's too direct, you now go ahead and say, you want Jesus to bless you. You want Jesus to increase you. Come out. Come out. That's, that's not people receiving Jesus. It, that is why a lot of people that come to the altar, they don't even know why they come. Then they will come here, they will be talking to each other and be laughing because the trumpet is giving an uncertain sound. But when you give a certain sound with clarity and say, a sinner will go to hell if he doesn't have Jesus. When you give a certain sound and say, come right now and receive Jesus into your life. There may not be as many as though that will come if you make it a blessing type of altar call. But the few that come, they will know why they came. That was the way I came years ago. When if somebody came to preach in an, our neighborhood, that brother, God bless his heart. When he finished preaching, he gave an altar call. Guess what? I didn't respond. <laughs> I didn't respond. But the trumpet sound he gave was so certain. I knew what he was talking about. But I didn't respond. I guess that brother probably went home discouraged because nobody responded. You know what I found out personally? Some of your best messages are those that people don't respond to. Nobody responded. He went home. But the message sank in. When I got home, then the Holy Spirit started his work. The Holy Spirit began to convict my heart. Do you, did you hear what I said? If you die now, where are you going? Where will you spend your eternity? I knew it wasn't about blessing. I knew what the Lord was talking about. I knew it wasn't about, do you want God to increase you? Do you want God? No, I knew what it was. So when I got home, the Holy Spirit had material to work with. Right there in my room, where no preacher was, I received Jesus into my life. Right there in that room, over 30 years ago now, I received Jesus because the trumpet did not give an uncertain sound. Some of us, our trumpets give uncertain sound. People don't know whether <laughs> they should receive Jesus or it is blessing, even when you want to pray. Even instead of you asking them to say, Jesus, come into my life, you just say, Father, just bless your children. That's not the prayer that will save anybody. Blow the trumpet. Let it be that anybody who hears you blow the trumpet, after that, will know whether they have been saved or they have not been saved. They may not respond, but they will not be in doubt about the status of their eternal welfare. So God said, blow the trumpet. Warn them. Warn them for me. In Amos chapter 6 and in verse 1. Amos chapter 6 and in verse 1. Media, we shouldn't be waiting for this long for, your, for scriptures to come up. Praise God. Praise God. Can we read this together, everyone? The first part, one to go. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Let's do it again. For the last time. Remember, he said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Now he says, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. There's work to do. 
There is work to do as watchmen. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Those that think that it is, it, is, it is game as usual. Those that think that they can continue to live a lackadaisical life even when the trumpet is sounded. The truth is this. We don't know when Jesus will come. He may come now. He may come at the daytime. He may come at noon. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion because they seem not to be going along with the agenda of God. And so God says, blow the trumpet. As I round off this morning, I'm encouraging you, blow the trumpet. I have decided to do more than I have ever done. We want to do more. In your neighborhood, look for a day when you will just go out and share tracts. Distribute tracts to them. Distribute tracts. Do you know the power of the printed page? That tract, they may not read it in one year. They may not read it in two years. But one day, God speaks spawns up a crisis in their life. And the person says, I remember I have one tract. He goes, picks that tract. And that day, two years after, what you shared with them will begin to work in their life. Go around, buy tracts with your money and share it to people. Talk to people about Jesus Christ. Let your WhatsApp every day share Jesus. Do you know as simple as say, have you received Jesus on your WhatsApp status? Could be you blowing the trumpet. Our lives, when I was in the university, one day a brother met me and said to me, you, you are always making me feel guilty. Ah, how do I make you feel guilty? He said, your, your life makes me feel guilty. I said, how? He said, now this was what he said to me, you know. In our rooms in OAU then, we live on uh, double bunk. So I was, oh, I was on top, he was below me. So he said, whenever he's arguing with the people in the room, most of them were sinners, whenever he, he was arguing with them, talking and all of that, he said, he will just look at my corner and he will find that I, I'm praying. Ah. I said, I'm not praying to you now. He said, then he will just be feeling bad. He said, he will, he will, he will try to continue the conversation, but he will not just be able to continue. He will just leave the room. That, what, what kind of nonsense is this now? Let your life be a light to them. Let your, instead of gathering together to gossip, gathering together to to, 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 to backbite. Let your life be a light that others can copy. Blow the trumpet. I see God helping us. Because between now and December, if Jesus starts, through you, two souls would have come to the Lord. Between now and then, because of your life, five souls would have come to the Lord. Ten souls would have come to the Lord. Because going forward, your daily prayer will include God save souls through me. God, get them saved through me and they will repent in the name of Jesus Christ. So blow the trumpet. Talk about Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Somebody says, see, I, I'm not a religious person. I, I separate my professional life from my religious life. Whenever I hear things like that from people, it's really because they are ashamed to represent Jesus. That's just the truth. You know what they call me where I work? Pastor. Up to the top. All of them call me pastor, pastor. And it doesn't take away from our professional life. And why they call me pastor? It doesn't mean I carry Bible to the church, to the office. No, I don't carry my Bible to the office. You don't have to carry your Bible in your hand as long as you carry it in your heart. They can see through. Let your life be a book before them. In the marketplace, when they are cheating people, they know you are not cheating. Let people that come to buy things around say, that's the woman you should buy for. Our measures are complete. Not all these padded measures that market women use. And you, a believer, also say, you know, this is how it is now. You, we want to buy beans from you. Half is already paper. And you know how to do it that, uh, see, these beans, is, they are reducing. You say, na so na dollar. Is it dollar that is part in the plate? 
Let our life speak the gospel. That is how we live. And that is how we are going to show sinners that Jesus still lives today. I believe God on your behalf that your life will never be the same again. The witch in your neighborhood will know that a watchman has arisen. <laughs> now somebody said she paid for, she paid to rent a place. And uh, they had sealed the deal. The payment was done. She had moved in. And then she said, a few days, just a few days, the landlady called and said, um, you are moving out. I'm returning your money. Ah, I just moved in a few days ago. I'm not owing you. Why am I moving out? She said, the woman said, I have to be honest with you. Your prayers are disturbing me. I, ah, I don't shout when I pray. How do you know that I'm praying? I don't shout. I don't make that. How do you know that I'm praying? Let me tell you something. They know that you are praying. The prayer of a true child of God is a signal jammer. When you are praying, they can't communicate. When you are praying, they can't fly. When, they are, when you are praying, they can't visit them. When you are praying, they can't visit others. When you are praying, they can't wreck havoc. He said, the woman said, please, 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 I don't want trouble. You will collect your money and you go and look for another place. Your neighborhood will know that an intercessor has arisen. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by the grace of God, we will plant Jesus Christ everywhere. The Bible says that, and the kingdom of this world shall become the kingdom of our God, and it shall reign. In my life, it shall reign. In your life, it shall reign. In your family, it shall reign. All over, all those of you joining us online, in your lives, it shall reign. In Abuja, it shall reign. In Port Harcourt, it shall reign. In Scotland, it shall reign. In Canada, it shall reign. Everywhere, we will see people turning to the Lord. In droves, people will turn to the Lord because now we are different. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't be ashamed of anything. Now, somebody says, excuse me. Somebody says, what if they persecute me? What if they begin to, they begin to come after me? Second Timothy chapter 3. What does the Bible say? Second Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 12. This was one of the scripture that was our comfort in those days. And it can be your comfort today. Second Timothy 3 12. Let's read it together. One to go. Can we now read it better? One to go. Did you see that? Paul said, <laughs> all that we live godly in Christ Jesus, all that we live as God wants them to live, all the people that we do the things God wants them to do, they will suffer persecution. So, if you are suffering persecution, you are in good company. Okay? Rounding up, Joshua said something to the people. Joshua 24 and in verse 15. Joshua 24, verse 15. One to go. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Are you reading that last part again? But as for me and my house, we will serve the law. Let me look at your neighbor and make that declaration. Do you see how that sounds more like what the choir sang to us? We're going to do it again. You're going to beat your chest and prophetically declare what it says. Can we go on to go? But as for me and my house, we will serve the law. Hallelujah. So Joshua said, if it's evil to you to serve the Lord, it's okay. He said, but choose you this day who you will serve. If you are choosing Jesus Christ, go all out for him. Jesus never fails. Some of you say, 
I'm just still doing this for some time. You don't know what you are doing. Jesus never failed. Go all out for him. Choose you this day who you will serve. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we return the glory to you. Oh my God. Baros Kabosha Palakasata. I want you to pray, Lord, give me the courage and give me the confidence to blow the trumpet whenever it is needed. Help me to win souls for you. Help me to represent you in public places. Pray right now. Pray right now. I will not be ashamed of you, Jesus. I will not be ashamed of you, Jesus. Those of you in Cotonou, if you begin to sound the alarm, very soon you will take over that land for Jesus. Bring them to the Lord. Bring them to the Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I want you to pray one prayer. The prayer of open doors. I want you to pray God open doors for me. Lift your right hand and pray for open doors. Lord open doors for me. Lord open doors for me. Lord open doors for me. Open doors for my business. Open doors. Give me a good job. Let my business thrive. Grant my heart desires. Grant my heart desires. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for today. And thank you for the opportunity we have to learn about the ministry of the watchman and how he needs to blow the trumpet. We will not be asleep again. We will do our part. And in the name of Jesus, through our efforts, souls will be won to you. Souls will come to the Lord. In the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that on the morning of the reward, you will not ask concerning any man's blood because we will do our part and there will be rewards for us in the name of Jesus we receive grace we receive strength we will not be weak we will not be weary but we will stand firm in the faith of the gospel I pray for all your people open doors for them open doors for them take them to different places around the world let their businesses prosper. Those that are looking for jobs, provide jobs for them. I pray for the coppers in our midst that as they finish serving, Lord, immediately settle them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for everyone joining us from around the world. Do great things in their lives that all of us, we may continue to have confidence in you and in your ability and that we may serve you without distraction. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we leave this mountain top today, let the blessings go with us. And let us revel in the, in, the, in the glory of this blessings for the rest of our lives. We shall not be weary. We shall not be tired. Lord, I pray that in spite of all the hardship going on in the land, you will make things easy for us. You will make things easy for your people. Is there anyone here who is sick today? Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is sick in their body, have pains anywhere, or any manner of sickness, receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that as a result of this conference, this 
few days of spending time in your presence. Let testimony begin to spring forth on every side in our personal lives, in our families, in our jobs, and even in LICC in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we love you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for being a part of this year's Easter conference. Glory. Hallelujah. the Lord. Please let's say a word of prayer for our daddy that has blessed us with the word today. Let's pray that the Lord is going to bless him and replenish every virtue that has gone out of him in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen him physically, spiritually, and in every other way in the name of Jesus. Let's also pray for all that have ministered unto us all through this conference. And the Lord will also bless them, and the Lord will also replenish them in every way in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. It's been a wonderful time this weekend. Let's give God all the glory. Let's give God all the praise. Praise the Lord. Yes, it's another Sunday in God's house, and you're welcome to Living Impact Christian Center. And our friends call us, our friends call us LICC. Living Impact Christian Center is a place where leaders, champions, and pathfinders are raised, commissioned, and sent out to impact their world positively. At LICC, you can, you can never miss it, and that is a fact. Our vision is raising godly people to impact their world positively through the living world. And our mission is to discover, inspire, build, equip, and send you forth. Our core values are embedded in an acronym LEAD, which is love, excellence, accountability, and discipleship. Praise God. Yes, this is a time where we welcome those that are worshiping with us for the very first time on a Sunday service like this. Please, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, kindly signify by the wave of your hands. Praise God. was specially composed for you, you would um, be given a form by the ushers. Please kindly fill and return to the ushers. You can have your seat. Thank you. A minister will um, see you after the service. Please kindly briefly wait behind after the service. Praise the Lord. Our weekly program is as follows. Every Monday, we have a prophetic prayer session with our senior pastor, Pastor Dr. Wale Ola Sojitag springs of water, so prayers. Praise the Lord. It has always been a very wonderful time, 8 p.m. Please do well to join and also share the link with your friends, with your contacts to also join the prayers as you believe that um, you will have your testimonies in Jesus' name. Praise God. Every Wednesday, we have our Bible study at 6 p.m. And on Thursdays, we also meet here for a program, Dining with the King. It happens between the hours of 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. And on Sundays, we meet at our various locations for a power-packed and impactful service by 9 a.m. where we share the rich contents from the undiluted Word of God. If you're not able to be here physically for any of our services, you can join us online via social media platforms. We are on Facebook at LICC Global. And we are on Instagram, on YouTube at LICC underscore global. On Facebook, LICC global. And on Instagram and YouTube, we are at LICC underscore global. For, our, um, for more information about the church, you can visit our website, www.licc.church. www.licc.church. 
You can also share your prayer requests with us on our prayer wall. And if you would love to listen to our services again, like the sermon of today, and even um, the three days um, Easter conference programs, you can also do well to download it from the website and the Facebook and Instagram page. Praise the Lord. If you want to join any department in the church, you can see the re assistant resident pastor in the person of Pastor Toby Ario. If you would want to express your intentions for marriage, you can now meet with the marriage team, which will be meeting every third Sunday after every service. It is not just for those that are married, it's also for those that are engaged or um, those that are also courting. Praise the Lord. And if you need counsel as married couples, you can also meet with the marriage team. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We have some programs um, coming up after this month. Um, I'll just run through the programs that we have for the month of April and May. We have, on for the 21st of April, we have the Ilukweju Church Anniversary. Praise God. Praise the Lord. 21st of April. The actual date is the 16th of April, but because it is a weekday, it's on Tuesday, we'll be celebrating on, so on Sunday, the 21st of April. Praise the Lord. And for the month of May, we also have a couple of programs. We have the Women Conference and Mother's Day Celebration. Praise God. We don't have excited women in the house. Praise the Lord. We have the Women Conference and Mother's Day Celebration. It's holding on the 11th and 12th of May, Saturday and Sunday, 11th and 12th of May. The theme is the remnants. The remnant. We also have the Children's Day and Parenting Sunday coming up on the 26th of, a of May. 26th of May, Parenting Sunday and Children's Day Celebration. For the Workouts Conference, we, also, we have our Workouts Conference. That is um, Lagos Church. Lagos uh, is holding at the branch level. We have for, um, it coming up on the 1st of June. Praise God. And for the fact, men are not left out. Praise God. Father's Day celebration and men's conference is also coming up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's only a resident pastor that is um, clapping hands. So. Praise God. We have the Father's Day celebration and men's conference coming up on the 15th and 16th of June. Please, let's do well to keep all this data and mark it on our calendars. For the church building project, the church building project is still on Project Arise and Build. Praise the Lord. It's not a one-time giving we, uh, our Father in the Lord has explained that we can actually give as the Lord places in our hands. So let's also put it in our, um, in our um, budget um, list or whatever it is that we use to plan our finances that we have to give towards this course. And the Lord will bless us as we do so in Jesus' name. Praise God. The women have been asked to wait behind after the service, both singles and married. Please wait behind briefly after the service. Praise the Lord. Please, let's do, um, if we have titles in the house or you have um, not given your title in the course of the week, you can step forward or you have your title to give, you can please come forward. And for those who have not given uh, an offering, if you would want to give your offering, please, you can signify to the ushers and they will just attend to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your children that has obeyed your injection by paying their tithe. We ask that the blessings of tithe are released upon them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, let's wait behind for the benediction. Praise the Lord, church. Come on, put us hands together for the Lord. The Lord has been faithful to us in this commission, LICC. Just before we have a benediction, let's just quickly turn to all our social media pages and those, our Instagram, our Facebook, our Twitter, our YouTube account, and just uh, write something that has blessed us this morning. Just have a few seconds to do that, please, before we take our benediction. Praise the Lord. Shall we rise as we take our benediction? 
Shall we rise up as we take our benediction from the book of Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23 from verse 25 to 26. Exodus 23 verse 25 to 26. And we're just going to do it together. How we ready? And you shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread. He shall bless your water. And I will take sickness from your midst. None shall lose her young by miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Let's take it one more time. 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your word, the bread and the water. And I will take sickness away from the midst. 26. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be buried in their land. The number of their days I will fulfill. Shall we just begin to declare these promises upon our lives? Then the name of Jesus, we ask in the name of Jesus, you will take sicknesses among us. We ask in the name of Jesus, I will fulfill the number of our days in the name of Jesus. You will bless our water, you will bless our bread, and you will keep us. Thank you, Father, because we've answered our prayers. For in Jesus' righteous name, we are afraid. Shall we just share the grace together? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 2024. 2024. Hallelujah.